Good day, everyone, and welcome to the CENTAS Second Quarter Fiscal Year 2023 Earnings Release Conference Call. Today's call is being recorded. At this time, I would like to turn the call, turn the call over to Mr. Paul Adler, Vice President, Treasurer, and Investor Relations. Please go ahead, sir. Thanks, Ross, and uh, thank you for joining us. With me is Todd Schneider, President and Chief Executive Officer, and Mike Hansen, Executive Vice President and Chief Financial Officer. We will discuss our fiscal 2023 second quarter results. After our commentary, we will open the call to questions from analysts. The Private Securities Litigation Reform Act of 1995 provides a safe harbor from civil litigation for forward-looking statements. This conference call contains forward-looking statements that reflect the company's current views as to future events and financial performance. These forward-looking statements are subject to risks and uncertainties which could cause actual results to differ materially from those we may discuss. I refer you to the discussion on these points contained in our most recent filings <clears throat> excuse me, with the Securities and Exchange Commission. I'll now turn the call over to Todd. Thank you, Paul. Second quarter total revenue grew 13.1% to $2.17 billion. Each of our businesses increased revenue at a double-digit rate. The benefits of our strong revenue growth flowed through to our bottom line. Operating income margin increased 70 basis points to 20.5%, and diluted EPS grew 13% to $3.12. I thank our employees, whom we call partners, for their continued focus on our customers, our shareholders, and each other. The Uniform Rental and Facility Services Operating Segment revenue for the second quarter of fiscal 23 was $1.71 billion, compared to $1.54 billion last year. The organic revenue growth rate was 11.3%. Revenue growth was driven mostly from increased volume. Our sales force continues to add new customers and penetrate and cross-sell our existing customer base. Businesses prioritize all we provide, including image, safety, cleanliness, and compliance. Challenged with labor scarcity and rising costs, businesses continue to turn to CentOS to help them get ready for the workday. Additionally, price increases contributed at a higher level than historically. We believe such a mix of revenue drivers, volume, and price is healthy and supportive of continued long-term growth. Our first aid and safety services operating segment revenue for the second quarter was $236.0 million compared to $202.0 $2 million last year. The organic revenue growth rate was 15.1%. This rate reflects the continued momentum of our first aid cabinet business, which continues to grow more than 20%. Whether it is COVID-19 or influenza, the health and safety of employees remains top of mind. We provide businesses with access to quick and effective products and services that promote health and well-being in the workplace. Personal protective equipment, or PPE, while still elevated compared to pre-COVID levels, declined slightly on a sequential basis. The revenue mix shift benefits our financial results because the cabinet service is a more consistent revenue stream and has higher profit margins than PPE. Our fire protection services and uniform direct sale businesses are reported in the all other segment. All other revenue, was $228.9 million compared to $184.9 million last year. The fire business organic revenue growth rate was 18.0%, and the uniform direct sale business organic growth rate was 33.9%. Now, before turning the call over to Mike to provide details of our second quarter results, I'll provide our updated financial expectations for our fiscal year. We are increasing our financial guidance. We are raising our annual revenue expectations from a range of $8.58 to $8.67 billion to a range of $8.67 to $8.75 billion, a total growth rate of 10.4 to 11.4%. Also, we are raising our annual diluted EPS expectations from a range of $12.30 to $12.65 to a range of $12.50 to $12.80 a growth rate of 10.8 to 13.5%. Mike? Thanks, Todd, and good morning. 
Our fiscal 2023 second quarter revenue was $2.17 billion compared to $1.92 billion last year. The organic revenue growth rate adjusted for acquisitions, divestitures, and foreign currency exchange rate fluctuations was 12.8%. Gross margin for the second quarter of fiscal 23 was $1 billion compared to $885.1 million last year, an increase of 15.5%. Gross margin as a percent of revenue was 47% for the second quarter of fiscal 23, compared to 46% last year. Energy expenses comprised of gasoline, natural gas, and electricity were a headwind, increasing 10 basis points from last year. Strong volume growth from new customers and the penetration of existing customers with more products and services helped generate great operating leverage. Gross margin percentage by business was 47% for uniform rental and facility services, 50.5% for first aid and safety services, 47.4% for fire protection services, and 37.2% for uniform direct sale. Operating income of $444.9 million compared to $381.2 million last year. Fiscal 23 second quarter operating income uh, increased 16.7%, and operating income margin increased 70 basis points to 20.5% from 19.8% last year. Our effective tax rate for the second quarter was 22.1% compared to 18% last year. The tax rate can move from period to period based on discrete events, including the amount of stock compensation expense. Net income for the second quarter was $324.3 million compared to $294.7 million last year, an increase of 10.1%. This year's diluted EPS of $3.12 compared to $2.76 last year, an increase of 13%. We had to overcome higher inflation, interest expense, and tax rate. Therefore, we are especially pleased with these financial results. Cash flow remains strong. On September 15, 2022, we declared dividends uh, and paid them on December 15, 2022, Uh, in the amount of $117.4 million in quarterly dividends. To provide uh, our annual, uh, Todd provided our annual financial guidance related to the guidance, please note the following. Fiscal 22 included a gain on sale of operating assets in the first quarter and a gain on an equity method investment in the third quarter. Excluding these items, Fiscal 22 operating income was $1.55 billion, a margin of 19.7%, and diluted EPS was $11.28. Please see the table in our earnings press release for more information. Fiscal 23 operating income is expected to be in the range of $1.75 billion to $1.79 billion, compared to $1.55 billion in fiscal 22 after excluding the gains. Fiscal 23 interest expense is expected to be $113 million compared to $88.8 million in fiscal 22, due in part to higher interest rates. Our fiscal 23 effective tax rate is expected to be 20.7%. This compares to a rate of 17.9% in fiscal 22 after excluding the gains and their related tax impacts. Please keep the following in mind when modeling third quarter versus fourth quarter financial results. The number of workdays in the third and fourth quarter of fiscal 23 are unchanged from fiscal 22. There are 64 days in the third quarter and 66 in the fourth. Less workdays results in less revenue to cover certain fixed and amortizing costs. In last year's third quarter, first aid and safety sold about $15 million in COVID test kits. We don't expect that revenue to repeat this year. Uniform direct sale organic revenue growth rates have been very strong year to date. However, we expect these rates to be pressured in the second half of the fiscal year as the business faces increasingly challenging comparisons. Payroll taxes reset in our third uh, fiscal third quarter, increasing our SG&A costs on a sequential basis. Our financial guidance does not include the impact of any future share buybacks, 
and we remain in a dynamic environment that can continue to change. Our guidance contemplates a stable economy and excludes pandemic-related setbacks or economic downturns. I'll turn it back over to Paul. That concludes our prepared remarks. Now we are happy to answer questions from the analysts. Please ask just one question and a single follow-up if needed. Thank you. If you would like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad now. Please be prepared to ask your question when prompted. You will also be allowed to ask one follow-up question. Once again, if you would like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your phone now. And our first question comes from Faiza Alwi from Deutsche Bank Securities. Please go ahead, Faiza. Yes, hi, good morning, thank you. Um, you know, you've had really good results, so congratulations on that. Um, I, I'm curious, you know, how would you characterize your outperformance? Has it been more because of new business? Has pricing come in sort of better than you expected? And maybe as part of that, if you could talk about, you know, your um, SAP program, like how much of a benefit do you think that has had, um, you know, over, over the, uh, during the course of this year? Uh, good morning, Faiza. Uh, thank you for your question. Um, yeah, we are, uh, our beat on, on the revenue side are um, uh, driven uh, significantly by new business. It it's, uh, continues to be uh, very attractive for us. Um, but we are uh, selling uh, more items into our, our customer base. So it's pretty broad. Um, I mentioned in the prepared comments that uh, pricing is above uh, uh, what our historical experience has been, uh, as you can imagine, due to uh, the experience with uh, inflation uh, that we're seeing across our organization. Um, but it is, uh, but the primary driver is volume growth, and uh, we're, we're we're benefiting from that. We're investing for that, and um, uh, things are things are. Uh, uh, we like the the trend there. Um, as far as on the margin side, uh, we are committed that we are not going to uh, uh, be uh, solely focused on growing margins because of pricing. In fact, um, uh, you know, we, we, ha we are dedicated to finding efficiencies in our business. Um, some of that is through uh, revenue leverage, um, just uh, general revenue leverage that we, we get. Uh, but we are uh, we're focused on finding efficiencies. And you mentioned SAP. Certainly, that technology is helping us significantly. We've had, uh, we've we've talked about our uh, uh, the digitization uh, or digital transformation of our business. That has been very very important to us, and uh, we're seeing benefits. Whether it's in uh, our routing efficiencies. Um, productivity of our sales partners, um, um, uh, getting better reuse of our products, um, uh, in-service inventory because of SAP. Uh, those are all uh, benefits that we're seeing, and uh, the marketplace is, no uh, is noticing it, and it's, uh, it's helping us with a competitive advantage in the marketplace. Great. And then as we look ahead, you know, some companies have started talking about uh, started sounding a little bit more cautious, you know, as you know, a lot of uh, economists are forecasting a potential recession. Um, talk about, you know, how do you, how, how does, you've talked previously about how your business might get impacted, um, but talk about, like, what's the sales pitch during, during a, a, a recession? I think that would be helpful for us to hear. Uh, great. Um, you know, uh, uh, first off, we, uh, uh, continue to uh, uh, watch our, our customer base very closely. We're looking at all of our data to see if there's um, trends that, we're, that uh, we, we might see if, uh, if, if uh, customers are consuming less and, and what have you. Um, so we're watching that. Now, as far as in a recession, um, you know, uh, uh, every recession that I've been, uh, I've experienced uh, while it's in us over the last 33 years, we've always sold an attractive amount of new business. And the reason being is, um, we help businesses uh, and, uh, in an environment, uh, we help them um, uh, uh, position them for success as far as uh, if they're in the, uh, in the business and they have less people, uh, then um, uh, somebody still has to take care of certain functions. Um, so we're able to sell uh, value there. If they are uh, in an environment where um, they're looking to save money, there's in uh, many cases we're able to save them money. 
It's, uh, it's not that they are, uh, we're always asking for increased spend. It's just redirect the spend to us. Uh, and uh, and in many cases, we're able to help customers with that instead of uh, spending it with, with uh, some other vendor or with a, uh, an, an outsourced uh, item that they bring it to us and, uh, and we can bring efficiencies to them. So uh, we fully expect that we, uh, our, our new business will be attractive uh, in any type of, um, of economic environment. Um, uh, uh, certainly, we, we, uh, we prefer when uh, the economy is growing robustly, uh, but we'll, we'll find ways to be successful in uh, whatever the environment. And our next question comes from Ashish Sabadra from RBC. Please go ahead, Ashish. Hi, this is John Billing for Sheesh. Congratulations on the strong results. Maybe just following up on Faisal's question, could you talk more about kind of retention as well as just what the current customer conversations are going like today? Thanks. Yeah, thank you, John. Um, uh, I'll, I'll speak to it if, Mike, if you'd like to uh, contribute on this uh, subject. But uh, uh, first off, our uh, retention levels are quite attractive. Uh, we, we very much like where they are. Um, we're, we're focused on making sure that our, our, our customer is, uh, it's, it's why we wake up in the morning, is to take care of them. And um, uh, in that focus, that culture is pervasive. Um, and uh, we're making sure that uh, we're, our partners are positioned to be able to make sure they, they can take care of them uh, and exceed their expectations. So uh, all that is, um, is attractive for us. And keep in mind, we have a, um, we have a really broad customer base. Um, so uh, um, you know, we, we serve over a million customers that we see on a, a very consistent basis. Uh, some are doing, um, some are, are, are challenged in the current economic environment, whether it's they, they struggle to find people or they're struggling with the, the, the wage inflation uh, uh, or inflation in general. And then we have other customers that are thriving in, uh, in this type of environment. And, and frankly, we have everything in between. And, uh, but generally speaking, uh, what we see are um, it's it's still we still like what we see uh, with our customer base, and uh, and I think that broad customer base uh, is a is a real benefit for us. That's great, color. Thank you. Maybe quickly to follow up, could you just talk about uh, capital allocation and if there's any change there, and just what you're seeing today in M and A, given some of the more challenging headwinds with inflationary pressures. Sure, John. This is Mike, and uh, we haven't uh, uh, changed our philosophy in terms of capital allocation. We want to continue to invest in the business, um, and, and certainly as we've seen the accelerated growth over the last three quarters, uh, we are investing uh, in the business. Uh, but, but we love M&A, um, and we, we continue to have all of the, the, the discussions uh, to try to keep that pipeline active, but, um, you know, it always takes two to, to come to a decision, and, and uh, we are working those conversations hard, and uh, you know our, our expectation is that we will be able to continue uh, in the M and A path. But that's we certainly love that 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 um, that option, and uh, and certainly we I, I misspoke a minute ago on on dividends. We paid a dividend in September on September 15th. We paid another one on on December 15th. And um, uh, we, we certainly have uh, increased the dividend every year we've gone public. We like that option as well. And then uh, the buyback continues to be an opportunistic um, uh, alternative for us when we have excess cash. So no philosophy changes. Uh, we're still working uh, all of those in the same way that we have. Our next question comes from George Tong from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead, George. Hi, thanks. Good morning. You mentioned you're continuing to sell more items to your existing customers. Can you describe how overall customer spending behaviors have evolved with the overall economy and if sales cycles have changed at all? Uh, thank you, George, um, uh, for the question and good morning. Um, uh, you know, uh, again, we have a very broad customer base. Um, uh, and um, we have a very broad product offering, uh, and we're blessed to have both. And, uh, and as a result, um, uh, we're organized in a manner where we're trying to uh, make sure that our customers know everything that we have to offer. They don't always. Um, uh, we've, uh, we've spoken in the past about how 
Um, going through the pandemic was really, really challenging. One of the uh, positive outputs of that was the, the fact that our customer base saw uh, the broadness of our offering and in and, and many cases didn't realize we had products and services that, that, that we have. So um, we're focused on that uh, we're, um, and trying to provide more value. When we do that, uh, it, is, it helps us because we're, uh, 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 when we stop uh, our truck the, uh, and the, uh, the invoice is larger, that's, that's good leverage uh, for us. Um, so we're providing more value to the customer, and we're getting um, uh, leverage uh, in that manner. So all that's positive. Um, so uh, uh, as far as um, uh, the sales process being elongated, now, we're not saying that uh, at this point. Um, uh, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, we are certainly seeing um, a mix out there, though. You know, some customers are struggling, and some are doing uh, uh, quite well, and everything in between. But generally speaking. Uh, the customer base continues to um, uh, to head in a positive manner. Got it. That's helpful. Uh, the upside in revenue this quarter was driven, I think, significantly by new business. Approximately how much of the new business growth in the quarter came from the no programmer market or uniform rentals? Yes, uh, good question, George. Uh, so uh, no programmers continues to be a, uh, a really uh, great opportunity for us. Uh, the majority of our our new uh, uh, accounts that we sell are are in the no programmer section, and um, uh, so we we've been focused on that. Uh, we we train our partners on that, uh, and uh, and those uh, that set of prospects um, sees value uh, in in what we provide, and uh, and as a result, the the TAM is uh, is massive, um, and uh, so that's very exciting for us, and uh, we see. Uh, uh, very nice growth opportunities into the future. And our next question comes from Andy Whitman from RW Baird. Please go ahead, Andy. Yeah, great. Thanks. Um, I, I guess I wanted to ask on the, on the first aid segment, Mike, um, the, the margins in particular, I think, really stood out. You made the comment that uh, you're getting some favorable mix shift as the PP and E is rolling out. You know, last quarter's margins were also very good, I think better than most people expected. So it feels like there's something pretty sustainable in, in um, the margin rates. Would you agree with that assessment, or is there something in there that we should be aware of as we, you know, come to 2Q fiscal 24 as a tough comp or something? Maybe just some um, detail as to what's really driving these margins that are, are really, frankly, a, a kind of a step function better than what you put up in the past. Yeah, uh, Andy, the, um, uh, you're right. The, the margins are, are uh, better than historical. Um, the mix shift has been great. Uh, we have a, um, you know, th th there's uh, a number of, of areas where we're able to uh, gain leverage. Certainly the new business is, uh, is a very nice lever for us. Um, the, the change in, I'll call it society, um, in, in the focus on health and wellness is a, is a real tailwind. For us, and uh, um, uh, so as a result of that, um, you know, cabinet revenue growth is is, is very attractive for us. Uh, that affects the mix, but we are also finding, um, you know, I, I mentioned we've got uh, we're finding um, uh, efficiencies in in um, uh, throughout our business, uh, and first aid is included in that. And um, so, uh, you know, whether it's routing technology, uh, we've been on on uh, SAP and first aid for a little bit longer. Uh, but we're finding efficiencies, and um, and we have a very strong supply chain that is um, uh, finding uh, opportunities to um, uh, to source better and uh, and improve uh, our overall operating margins. And Mike, anything you'd like to contribute there? Well, the only thing I might add is uh, to to uh, specifically Andy, um, nothing to call out that that is one time or short term in nature. It's it's just that the uh, the business is performing very very well. Great. Um, I guess it's kind of similar question, different segment um, uh, on the on the uniform rental and facility services segment. Uh, obviously, you're <clears throat> you're getting a good uh, gross margin leverage, which says a lot about all the things you've already talked about. You mentioned making investments in the business. It, it appears that the SGNA line um, and, and the uniform rental segment in particular is has been seeing investments. 
there. And I was just wondering, uh, maybe you could provide some detail as to what kinds of investments you're making, or if it's maybe just still kind of return from COVID and getting some travel and T and E back in there. Uh, maybe just a little uh, detail about uh, SGNA in the rental segment. Yeah, Andy, uh, good question. Uh, yeah, we're excited about the gross margin um, improvement that we're seeing in that business, uh, despite a, um, a 20 basis point uh, headwind that we're uh, that we're up against in energy still. So, um, uh, so you're right. The um, uh, the SGNA, SGNA is up. Um, uh, it's uh, there is a, we're making investments in the business and uh, appropriately so. Um, also, some GNA, you know, medical costs, uh, workers' comp, and what have you, uh, are higher this quarter. Uh, and there's always some puts and takes uh, as it relates to that. But we are guiding towards um, for the whole year in that business incrementals in the 20 to 30 percent range. And um, uh, and we're uh, as I uh, as I mentioned, we're, we're that margin expansion is going to come in a number of ways. Uh, but revenue growth uh, leverage. You know, uh, productivity, which is a broad word, right? There's so many areas where we get productivity improvements uh, in pricing. Uh, but um, uh, yeah, so we're um, uh, we're focused on improving the margins there, and uh, we'll manage through uh, the GNA investment, um, uh, the SGNA investment as we uh, as we move forward. And our next question comes from Tim Tim Mulrooney from William Blair. Please go ahead, Tim. <coughs> Good morning, Todd, Mike, Paul. Um, uh, two questions. One on labor. You know, we we've heard from others, other industries and companies that labor availability today still remains somewhat a governor of growth. I mean, has that been the case for you guys? Are, are you holding back in certain markets due to constraints around qualified labor? And and, and just generally, how would you characterize the labor availability situation today versus say last quarter? Uh, thanks for the question, Tim. Good morning. Um, you know, as far as labor is concerned, the uh, I'll call the labor market in totality easier, but not easy. Um, uh, it is still certainly challenging there. Uh, we um, uh, we care passionately about how that looks for our customers and how our, how it impacts our customers. I mentioned some are struggling to to staff still. Um, and um, uh, and as a result, that affects their business, which in, impacts us. So, uh, but <clears throat> excuse me, uh, <clears throat> from the uh, standpoint of CentOS and how we're staffed, uh, that is not affecting our our growth rate. It would be more about how our customers are impacted. Um, I can tell you, it wouldn't go well here if, uh, if someone said I can't grow uh, 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 as fast as you uh, think I should because uh, because I can't staff. Um, we figured that out and. Uh, and we, we think the, um, the environment that we provide for our partners where uh, they have great opportunities and a great uh, uh, um, uh, wage and benefits and uh, great security and great uh, uh, development uh, is a real um, advantage for us in the marketplace. So, uh, so as far as CentOS staffing, uh, that is not slowing us up. Uh, um, certainly our customers could be impacted by that to uh, some degree. No, that's good. That's good color, Todd. I mean, it's it's good to know. I mean, there are some companies we talk to that are literally dialing back on on sales and marketing costs just because they can't you know, find the labor to support the growth. So that's uh, that's good to know. You guys aren't in that situation. One more from me on wage rate inflation. You know, curious what that's running at approximately right now for your um, you know folks actually out on the routes. Um, and, and how does that compare to your historical averages? Thank you. Yes, um, uh, w wage rates, I don't, I don't have an exact number to give you, but uh, uh, we start uh, with the answer and work backwards. And the answer is we've got to have great people. Uh, we've got to have uh, um, really well-trained and, and prepared people who can uh, help us be successful and take care of our customers. So uh, is, uh, is it above historical? Yes, it is above historical. Um, um, but uh, but nevertheless, um, you know we're focused on uh, having putting the very very best team out on the uh, on the field so that we can take great care of our customers and uh, and uh, and prepare us for the future uh, of this organization. And our next question comes from Manav Paitnik from uh, Barclays. Please go ahead, Manav. Thank you. Uh, 
I guess just to follow up a little bit, you know, there's a lot of press out there around C-suite anxiety, right? And I just wanted to know, you know, historically, I guess, how long before that starts slowing all the way down to, you know, kind of the your direct customers on the street and how, how quickly, um, you know, can you react? Because, like, you know, your current guidance obviously is through me, and so things might, you know, be fine till then, but I was just curious you know, if there's a if there's a timing element that we should be considering too. Yeah, it's Mana, thanks for the question. Yeah, we always have anxiety, um, right? It's uh, it's uh, it, it's part of uh, making sure you're sharp. And uh, uh, but uh, but nevertheless, it is um, you know we do worry about you know do uh, uh, do our our uh, uh, as an economy do we talk ourselves um, uh, into pulling back and does that happen to our customer base and does that happen, you know, uh, as a, as a ripple effect. And, um, but we're not seeing it. Um, we're, uh, again, our, our customer base, uh, it's so broad. Uh, some are, some are doing great, some are not. Um, but in general, we like the direction of our customer base and we, uh, in many ways, we hope they, uh, they, uh, they, they don't read uh, the press and they, uh, they stay focused on uh, taking care of their business. In investing for the future, and um, uh, but we'll see what uh, what that holds, and how the Fed handles things, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, how that might impact the uh, general economy. Manav, I might uh, I might add, uh, you know, you go back two and a half years uh, to the pandemic, to the beginning of the pandemic. I think we we showed that that we can be pretty nimble uh, when it comes to uh, our cost structure and adapting to changes in the environment. Yeah, that's fair. And Mike, maybe if I can just ask a follow-up, just on uh, capex and free cash flow expectations for the year, any changes or help there? Uh, look, we uh, uh, what what you've seen maybe in the first half of this year is is um, uh, when we grow, and we we've seen uh, we've seen three quarters now uh, straight of double-digit organic growth. Uh, so a nice uh, actually four quarters. So a nice acceleration in uh, their performance. And, and when we grow and the volumes are healthy, uh, we certainly invest um, in the business. And that, that investment can come through in the way of working capital. And so you see a little bit more working capital usage in our cash flow statement. And uh, that's, that's not uh, necessarily unusual for us when we see an acceleration in the growth rate. But, but uh, we like our cash flow. It will continue to be strong. Um, and uh, this year should not be an exception to that. And, and that, that cash flow, uh, I talked a few minutes ago about capital allocation and, and the cash flow that we've got going this year uh, will not um, uh, force us to make choices. We, we can still do all of the capital allocation uh, that we typically think about. Um, so we like where we are. Our next question comes from Andrew Steinerman from JP Morgan Securities. Please go ahead, Andrew. Hi, Todd, Mike, and Paul. Uh, I wanted to ask a little bit about merchandise amortization. Kind of given the strength of Cintas's new business, which usually has new uniforms going into service, you know, how did merchandise amortization affect gross margins? I mean, rental gross margins in the second quarter. You know, obviously, I, I know rental gross margins were up um, despite any effect of merchandise amortization. And do you expect rental gross margins to be up in the second half of the year, year over year? We, uh, Andrew, we, uh, as it relates to the amortization, certainly uh, you've seen the growth that, that I've talked about a few times, and that, uh, that uh, translates into more uh, garments and, and other products being injected into our in-service inventory, and we love that. Uh, we love when that happens. And, uh, and, and so we're seeing uh, growth in the amortization, um, but, uh, but we're able to leverage that um, pretty nicely so far. Uh, and and uh, you uh, you know our business well. Our, our we amortize many of those rental products, and so um, we have we have a good uh, foresight or, or visibility into what's coming, and that means we can plan, uh, we can source, we can uh, we can um, uh, increase prices when necessary. So so the visibility gives us. Um, uh, a nice advantage in terms of how we think about other ways of operating the business. Um, and as it relates to the second half of the year, look, I, I, we, we, don't, uh, we don't 
typically provide guidance on, on gross margin specifically, um, but, uh, but uh, certainly uh, the, the guidance that we've provided uh, contemplates improvement in our uh, operating margins in the second half of the year. And uh, the, the growth that we have on the top line and all of the other uh, initiatives and things we've got going on, um, uh, they, they are performing well and enabling us to do that, uh, to do that margin improvement, even in a difficult period of time. Okay. Thank you. And our next question comes from Heather Balski from Bank of America. Please go ahead, Heather. Hi. Thank you for taking my question. Um, so your, your guidance for the, the rest of the year, I guess for the back half, implies growth probably in the, on the sales side in the 8 to 9% range, which is, which is moderating from, from what you did in the first half. Um, I'm curious if you could just walk us through kind of where you're assuming there might be some deceleration. Is that just as you come off um, – lap in the COVID recovery, um, and, and maybe where there might be opportunity for upside just based on the strength you've seen year to date. Uh, Heather, thanks for the question. Um, yes, so uh, a, a slight, but, but still very attractive growth. Uh, we like where that is. Um, and we're preparing for that. And, uh, but we are certainly up against some tougher uh, 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 comps in the, uh, in the back half. Uh, specifically with uh, first aid and uh, uniform direct sale, um, uh, so um, uh, we're, we'll be lapping those. And uh, but we like the growth levels, and uh, we find them quite attractive. And um, and, uh, and that's what we're, uh, we are preparing for. Thank you. And do you think you know? Are there there are areas that you're seeing in your business? You know, you've 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 done well year to date. You've raised your guidance. Sort of, I, I know first aid and safety you know, is is very strong right now. Um, other sort of areas in your business, whether it's certain customers like your opportunity in healthcare or other business lines where you're, you're really seeing outperformance and kind of growth beyond your, your typical run rate? Yes, uh, good question. So um, uh, again, our customer base is very broad, but I'll, I'll tell you this, that our uh, uh, verticals uh, where we're investing are uh, you know, healthcare, hospitality, education, government, are performing quite well, and they're growing at a an accretive rate to our our growth, and we think we chose them wisely and invested in them appropriately, and um, uh, and th and that uh, that customer base is uh, is doing well uh, within that customer base. Uh, again, you get uh, a mix, um, but but nevertheless, in general, we're uh, we we like that area, and uh, and it's growing very attractively for us. Our next question comes from Kartik Mehta from North Coast Research. Please go ahead, Kartik. Uh, thank you. Hey, me, I know you've talked about the economy uh, a few times. I'm wondering, as you look at some of the to some of the benchmarks for your business and maybe your customers' businesses, anything that stands out either that is positive that maybe you were anticipating would decline or anything that's negative that you were anticipating uh, would be the other way? Uh, uh, Kartik, it's uh, it's a good question. Um, um, uh, I continue to talk about our, our broader customer basis. So you name it, you, we we see it. Um, uh, but uh, the the scarcity of uh, of uh, employ uh, or of you know, uh, workers is an issue. Um, you know, employ unemployment is still at a at a uh, very very low level. There's still I think 10 million job openings in the uh, in the U.S. economy. Uh, so uh, as a result of that, um, you know, um, uh, you know, people are are um, I think uh, careful uh, about the, um, how they're handling their their uh, employees and being judicious about that. And then, just uh, last question, just from an energy standpoint, obviously, uh, fuel prices are coming down. Uh, it seems as natural gas prices are coming down as well. Is the headwind you're anticipating from energy prices maybe what you anticipated at the beginning of the year when you gave guidance to now? Has that changed at all? Yeah, so uh, we still see uh, energy as a headwind. Um, and um, uh, when, you, when you go to the pump, um, right now it is uh, uh, certainly a little bit lower um, uh, than, uh, than it was uh, a quarter ago. 
Uh, but about 40% of our spend on energy is in natural gas for our, our production facilities and electric. And, um, uh, and that is not uh, heading in the right direction. Um, uh, natural gas prices are up uh, and electric prices are up. Um, and um, uh, so, but uh, certainly the attention more gets to uh, everybody fills up at the pump for the most part, um, uh, but not as much focus on natural gas or electric, but, uh, but we're seeing it and uh, it's, uh, it's uh, I'm sure it's affecting households as well. And our next question comes from Seth Weber from Wells Fargo Securities. Please go ahead, Seth. Uh, hey guys, uh, good morning and happy holidays. Um, I, I wanted to ask another margin question. I, I, you know, Mike or Todd. I mean, the guidance for this year, the back half. It seems like your the guidance kind of implies a higher than normal incremental margin. And I think Todd, you mentioned uh, the uniform business could be twenty to thirty percent incrementals this year. Um, is this, are we moving into a, a, a scenario where incrementals could be higher than, you know, your normal, you know, call it 20 to 25% range, and maybe are you more comfortable talking in like a 25 to 30% range uh, for the business going forward? Thanks. Well, we haven't, uh, Seth, we haven't really changed the, the, the narrative on that in terms of the 20 to 30%, but, but, you know, as, as, there, there are there are different ebbs and flows within the business, and sometimes there are periods where we are investing maybe a little bit more than uh, than in other quarters, et cetera. And um, you know, Todd's focused on the full year results and the and the longer term results, and so there are there can be ups and downs. Certainly, uh, uh, based on our guidance, uh, we are contemplating a margin improvement in the back half of the year. And um, I, I don't know that it's anything that we're ready to say is, is a new norm. It's just simply we look at the year and say we've got some really good uh, uh, incremental margins uh, in that 20 to 30 percent range that will cause the full year margins to go up. But I, I wouldn't look at it as a, uh, as a new normal type of a thing. It's just simply uh, there are ebbs and flows within the business and, and timing of investments, et cetera. Okay, that's, that's helpful. Thanks. And then just, um, you know, the fire business, the organic growth in the fire business continues to be in this sort of mid to high teens range. Is that a sustainable number, do you feel like, um, for fire? And just sort of maybe any color on really what's driving that unusually strong organic growth. Thanks. Uh, yes, Seth, I'll, I'll take that one. Um, we we love the uh, the fire business. It's a very attractive business for us. It's uh, it's the only business we're in where um, every business legally has to comply with uh, with the, uh, the the uh, the the local laws around it. So the TAM is absolutely massive, and um, and our sales team is doing really well. And they're uh, um, and we're we're selling into uh, additional customers. We're selling more into our existing customers. We've got a great offering. We really like our position in the marketplace, um, and the team's doing a heck of a job. So, um, uh, so yeah, we we would um, you know uh, we would like to uh, continue to grow that business at double digit rates. Um, uh, can it uh, achieve uh, the levels that where we are today? Uh, that would be uh, outstanding. Um, uh, but uh, uh, certainly, double digits is our, is our focus for that business. Got it. Okay. Thank you, guys. Happy. Thank you. And our, next, our, our next question comes from Shlomo Rosenbaum from uh, Stiefel Nicholas. Please go ahead, Shlomo. Hi. Thank you very much. I want to get a little uh, follow up on some of the questions on uh, client hiring, uh, which obviously could impact Sintas volumes. Uh, uh, do you feel like you really sell at a level in the organization that you get um, kind of an advanced look at the hiring plans, or is it really kind of you monitor it as it happens? So like in current, you, you, you need to react because clients will just kind of add or subtract people, you know, kind of in the moment, but you don't, you know, it's, it's not that you, you're getting a heads up on that. I'm um, just trying to understand like your, your view. Obviously, it's a very broad client base, but just in, in, in more generalities. And then there been any change. You used to talk about kind of an ad stops metric, and I'm wondering if there's anything materially materially different in, in what that would look like now. Uh, Shlomo, uh, great question. The um, uh, 
it really depends upon our view of the um, uh, of what the, uh, the staffing levels of our customers um, uh, will be. It really depends upon our, where our relationship is. Uh, some they'll share us with us, um, hey, uh, calendar 23, here's what we're thinking. Others, uh, they don't, depending upon our relationship levels or or their planning level. And um, uh, so in that case, it's, it's, we, it's a little bit more reactive. So uh, you name it, uh, we, we have that type of experience uh, uh, where it's uh, uh, very transparent and we, we have a good, um, uh, we can see around the corner with, the, with our expectations there. And then some are just very reactive and uh, wait to see what's going on with their customers. So, um, uh, but generally speaking, with ad stops, I would say uh, we, we see our, uh, our experiences uh, continues and, and the patterns that we have in the past. And I mentioned earlier that, you know, uh, I don't know, you know, uh, um, you know certainly Q1, uh, I'm speaking of the economy, Q1, Q2 was uh, GDP shrunk, Q3 it was slightly positive. We'll see what Q4 uh, holds in store for GDP. Um, uh, tough to tell if we're in a technical recession or if we're not and what uh, calendar 23 um, holds in store for us. Um, but uh, the the employment situation in the U.S. is um, it's still tough to get people, and uh, as I mentioned, there's 10 million job openings. Um, we'll see if that continues to decline. Um, uh, but uh, uh, we're we're trying to make sure that we're positioned to uh, to grow. And um, uh, but as Mike mentioned, if, um, if if the economy affects our customer base in a, in a very negative manner. Uh, we'll be prepared to pivot and um, and and manage our cost structure appropriately, and um, and uh, we're planning on uh, on uh, being successful in uh, whatever the uh, economic environment uh, brings to us. Thank you. Just one follow up on just on the pricing. Um, is it uh, kind of normal now for the clients to expect these pricing increases, or is it um, are you getting any material pushback on them as as this time is going on? Well, Shlomo, uh, uh, you know, as I mentioned in our prepared remarks, uh, you know, pricing um, is uh, has, has always been a, um, uh, a component of our growth. Sands a, uh, you know, what we went through with uh, some serious economic uh, uh, turbulence with COVID-19 and, uh, and what have you. Um, so that being said, uh, we're, we're planning on uh, uh, growing our business uh, most attractively through volume growth and getting leverage there. And uh and planning on growing margins via leverage and that revenue growth and finding efficiencies uh, in our business. Uh, that being said, it's it's a very competitive environment. Um, and um, you know, it, uh, as we talk to our customers, um, they they certainly challenge us and and uh, and and they want us to find efficiencies in our business and not just pass along cost to them. And that's what we're focused on. Our next question comes from Scott Schneeberger from Oppenheimer. Please go ahead, Scott. Uh, thanks very much. Good morning. Happy holidays, everyone. Um, for, for first question, um, in, in uniform rental, um, I'm just curious about the, uh, the, the winning business. You guys have obviously highlighted penetration of existing customers, strong volume growth, new customers. Could you speak to... What is no programmer versus what is competitively won? Is there a lot of that activity right now of competitively won? And then if you could just kind of uh, differentiate what you're seeing with large customers versus maybe small and mid-size uh, in, in the context of that question. Thanks. Yes, yeah, Scott. Uh, I'll start, Mike. If you want to contribute on uh, this subject, there. Uh, um, uh, you know. Uh, as far as the uh, the market, uh, the uh, the competitive market, um, uh, you know, no, we sell a lot of no programmers. Um, certainly, we do take business uh, from our competitors, um, but that's uh, we we find that there's so many businesses out there that say, "Wow, I didn't realize that um, you would serve a business of my size," or uh, "I didn't realize you had those types of products and services," and they see great value in what we do. And um, so uh, we're very focused on that. Um, as far as uh, the customer base, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, the larger customers, some of them are, are struggling. Uh, smaller ones are certainly some of them are struggling. 
But I would say, generally speaking, the smaller ones are probably a l under a little bit more pressure just because it's tough to attract, retain, staff, um, uh, pay people, um, and um, uh, at the levels that uh, you have to to be competitive in the marketplace. So um, uh, that's, um, that's kind of a generalization that may not be completely fair. And I could give you plenty of examples of smaller businesses that are thriving, uh, but um, uh, that's kind of a generalization I thought uh, I might share with you. Great, thanks. And then as a follow-up, um, specifically uniform direct sales, uh, I think it was about 33, 34% organic growth in the quarter, very strong. I heard you mention on an earlier question that would be a, a segment facing some tougher uh, comps in the, in the back half of the fiscal year. Can you just speak to kind of what the business activity has been there? What's driving the strong growth right now? Um, what type of customers has it been, you know, particularly lumpy, or has it been just a solid, broad-based versus, you know, maybe just one or two big customer wins? Um, just a little bit more uh, elaboration on, on on that business line. Thanks. Sure. Uh, good question. Uh, very broad based. Um, uh, it's not uh, you know one customer or a couple uh, customers. It's, it's very broad based. And, um, and when you think about that uh, that area, certainly hospitality is a big component of it. But there's other customers that are you know uh, 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 national in scope type customers. Um, uh, but uh, you know um, uh, hospitality specifically, I'll, I'll, I'll speak to. Um, yeah, they're uh, they're struggling to staff, um, uh, but they are. Uh, there's a lot of demand uh, out there in the uh, in the hospitality sector, uh, and as a result, uh, they need help. And um, um, you know, and uh, when you think of that, uh, when they're struggling to uh, to staff, you know, um, uh, and they have to provide uh, products and services, um, uh, we've become a very attractive uh, uh, opportunity for them to uh, to sole source. And to provide uh, products that uh, they can get quickly and that are very attractive, and uh, uh, and allow them to um, uh, provide the proper guest experience that they want to provide for their uh, uh, for their their patrons. And our next question comes from Tony Kaplan from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead, Tony. Thanks very much. Um, wanted to ask a follow up on pricing. I know you've been sort of putting through a higher level of price than normal recently. And now it sounds like, um, you know, obviously you've mentioned a couple of times that volume is going to be a bigger driver to growth. But I guess my, my question is, is, is pricing going to be more of a normal increase versus prior years or, you know, based on, you know, like the challenging macro, although you said you're not seeing it yet, like is it going to be lower than normal or roughly around sort of a normal year for pricing in calendar 23? Yeah, uh, Tony, uh, good question. Um, uh, you know, uh, as we think about pricing in the future, um, uh, it certainly is above historical today. Um uh, it's tough to predict what uh, inflation holds in the future, uh, but um, uh, presuming that that uh, comes down, I'd say you'd see us uh, closer to historical uh, from a, a price adjustments. Uh, but it really depends upon you know what happens with the Fed, what happens with the economy, what happens with wage pressures. There's so many inputs, uh, and that that one's tough to predict. So, uh, but we're watching it very closely. Great. And then when you think about the margin and expansion implied, and, and you mentioned sort of higher margin expansion in the back half of the year. Is that, like, I guess how much of it is a result of, like, energy costs coming down from prior levels or um, maybe inflation, you know, having reached its peak and coming down? Like, I guess how much of it is that versus, um, you know, scale or initiatives, if you could give any sort of breakdown or examples of where the margin expansion will come from. Thanks. Tony, um, I, I, I would say it comes from a lot of different places, and it's, it's hard to put a number on any particular one of them. Um, but, it, um, you, you know, a couple examples. Uh, energy, uh, we've, we've kind of uh, looked at that, as Todd mentioned earlier, still as a little bit of a headwind. 
uh, going forward. So I'm, I'm, we're, we're not necessarily expecting we'll get a bunch of energy benefit uh, in the second half of the year, but our revenue growth has been really strong and um, and the performance, uh, uh, the momentum uh, has, has been good. And that certainly will continue to help in the second half of the year. When we grow uh, at, at real nice levels like we've guided towards and like we've had in the first half of the year, that always helps uh, our ability to, to uh, drive better margins. Uh, but we've talked over the last um, uh, uh, year or so about uh, important initiatives that we have. Those remain and continue to do well. And those are things like our routing improvements uh, through our smart truck initiative. Um, and we have more of those, whether it is sourcing initiatives that Todd touched on in first aid or others. But, but those initiatives become uh, very important to us too. And then there, there are just some timing of things, maybe some, uh, some investment in the first half of the year uh, that, that was really helping propel our, our growth and continue our momentum that may not be at the same type of level in the second half of the year. So it's a, it's a lot of those different pieces that, that kind of fall together. And it's, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to put, uh, uh, put numbers on every single one of those. And at this time, there are no further questions. I would like to turn the call back to Paul for closing remarks. All right, well, thank you for joining us this morning. We will issue our third quarter of fiscal 23 financial results in late March, and we look forward to speaking with you again at that time. Take care. This concludes today's conference call. Thank you for your participation. You may now disconnect. The host has ended this call. Goodbye.